coming to you from Yokota. This is CBC Asia. I'm Chacha Haas. Thanks for joining us. Today, we have an exclusive behind the scenes look at the American Forces Network, an inside scoop of Kayoko's ballet class, a deeper appreciation of Japanese culture, and an exclusive clip of the YOSC fashion show. Over at AFN, we had the opportunity to talk with a few of their employees, including the deputy director of AFN Pacific, Rusty Barfield. In our discussion with director Rusty Barfield, we found that AFN is all about putting together a show to inform and entertain. Let's take a look. The American Forces Network, better known as AFN, serves to provide information and entertainment to the American servicemen and women, United States government civilians, and their families. Main focus of AFN is to inform and to entertain. Uh, you know, we entertain folks by our radio shows and, and our AFN programming that we have on, on television, and we inform folks by the TV spots and the radio shows that we do, and guests on the radio shows every single morning. So it's really twofold. It's information and entertainment. As a news organization, it is their responsibility to ensure that their audience is informed to pull through technical difficulties and to always be prepared. We have a lot of things happen out of the ordinary. Um, for example, well, and the, I can tell you with the experiences uh, with natural disasters, okay, like all of a sudden you'll lose power in the middle of a show or, uh, you know, I was at the broadcast facility in the Philippines when the big volcano went off, uh, Mount Pinatubo. So, there's a lot of things that happen that just you have to respond and you, and you have to um, just be ready to broadcast at a moment's notice. Uh, you know, Operation Damion with the big uh, storm that hit the Philippines last year, we had to get a lot of people from here to cover uh, what was going on there in the Philippines with that disaster. So that's a, that's a big challenge of always being prepared, uh, being ready to go. Uh, the AFN the news studio. team works diligently yeah, to supply right. news every day to all of its uh, viewers happen. and listeners. Those folks aren't on TV or on the radio, but they work hard to make it happen. And uh, it can be very stressful, especially with, you know, 12 hours radio live a day come out of this building to about 30 million people in Tokyo and uh, that serves all of our, our bases in this Kanto Plain area. So. It's the constant churn and constant responsibility uh, that starts at 6 a.m. every morning and goes to 6 p.m. with our live hours here in this building. So uh, it's quite a responsibility. Viewers and listeners can tune in every day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. We'll talk to some people behind the mic there in just a moment, but first, let's take a look inside a local school of ballet. 16-year-old ballerina Lauren James and 10-year-old Aiko Witt tells us the hardest parts of being a ballerina. Um, probably not being flexible enough or having my toes hurt during point. But <laughs> probably when I learn a new move and I'm not very good at it, but to improve that I usually just try it again and again. The girls tell us that the most important thing in ballet is taking care of yourself. Um, I can do stretches at home and make sure I eat well and take care of my body. Before the recital, I usually make sure I don't get any big injuries and stay healthy. It teaches me discipline and it gives me more confidence about myself. Um, it's probably taught me how to try and work on one thing to improve it. For Lauren and Aiko, ballet is a technique to release stress and energy. It teaches a good way to learn self-confidence and discipline. Later, we'll talk more about AFN and how it's expanding to social networking sites, but now we'll go to our field reporter, Nick Cannon. Hello Far Easters, I'm Nick Cannon with CBC Asia. Earlier this week we visited the Kumajawa Chincha Shrine built in the 16th century. It is the longest standing shrine in Fusa. 
here's what we saw. Despite language barriers, caretaker Yuri Noguchi gave us a warm welcome. She spent the afternoon sharing her culture and religious beliefs with us. Our first destination was a washing station. By washing and drinking the well water, it is believed that we are washing away all the dirt from the former years. At the Saisen, or offering box, we threw in a few coins as a sign of respect. Afterwards, it ended with a few claps and a moment of silence as we both wished for different things. At the counter, there were colored sticks to choose from. The color of the stick chosen would determine the fortune we would receive. The oracle would be given a chance to come true by tying it to the tree. The Japanese-American friendship is similar to that of the Jincha Shrine. They have survived many obstacles and will continue to do so. That's all for me guys. Now back to Cha Cha. Thanks Nick. In an attempt to gain a bigger audience, AFN expands itself to social networking sites such as Facebook and Twitter. With internet access, listeners can tune in to the radio at any time. We change so rapidly with uh, technology and uh, the way people consume uh, information. But what's also interesting is in terms of the the message and what we deliver, that never changes at all. Uh, now we're building shorter length pro products uh, for all the platforms, for radio, uh, for Facebook, let's say, for websites. So AFN is just not only TV and radio anymore, it's, it's all the, the platform, media platforms. On Tuesday night, we caught up with Katie Hodgkins, president of Yokota's Officers Spouses Club, to discuss its first ever thrift shop fashion show. The fashion show is actually an event that we're doing tonight with the Yokota Officers Spouses Club. The, the YOSC owns the thrift shop and we always have a monthly function and um, this is our monthly function that we are having. We have invited our Enlisted Spouses Club as well to join us. Um, the thrift shop itself, the, all the pro proceeds go right back out into the community through the YOSC and the YESC, um, the two spouse clubs. So this fashion show tonight is to kind of show off what we have at our shop and let other people see, see what we have as they may not have been in the thrift shop yet since they've been here. The club works to support others through scholarships for spouses and high school students. They even help other organizations who don't have enough funds to put together events on their own. The Yokota Officers Spouses Club works strictly by donations and volunteers. They aim to give back to the public. Although the clothes may be used, they are still in good quality. That is all we have for you today, Far Easters. I'm Cha Cha Haas with CBC Asia. Thanks for watching.